Last year, I announced the end to our combat mission in Iraq, and to date, we've removed more than 100,000 troops. Now that the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have officially ended, the United States is facing yet another threat to global security with the rise of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Republican and Democratic lawmakers and the White House are in the middle of a contention on what the United States' role should be in fighting global terrorism. More than 2,000 coalition airstrikes have pounded these terrorists. We're disrupting their command and control and supply lines, making it harder for them to A move. week after President Obama submitted a war authorization bill to Congress, lawmakers in Capitol Hill are cautious to give the president a blank check in fears of another combat war in this region that has become the graveyard of American hopes for stability and democracy in the region. From James Foley to Peter Kasich, from Stephen Sotloff to Caden Mueller, as ISIS and its affiliates from all over the region indiscriminately beheads its hostages, critics of the presidents like Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham have denounced his foreign policy and strategy in containing the organization's expansion. Some have called for deployment of combat troops. However, the president and his allies have insisted that this is not an option, at least for now. Meanwhile, after the Charlie Hebdo attacks in Paris that cost the lives of 12 victims and the hostage incidents in Sydney and Denmark, the United States is compelled to confront the growing threat of Islamophobia. After the murder of three Muslim students in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, UC Berkeley's Muslim Student Association held a candlelight vigil in solidarity with the families of the victims. We sat down with Dr. Newsom, a counterterrorism analyst at the University of California, Berkeley, to examine the motivations behind ISIS's crusade and what the National Coalition's counter tactics should be. There are lots of vectors for attacks on the homeland, and these attacks can not involve hard borders at all. So cyber attacks are an example. But not just cyber attacks that begin and end in cy cyberspace, also the use of social media to radicalize mm -hmm. persons already within the United States. Dr. Bosian, a professor of Near Eastern Studies at the same institution, points to the Bush administration and its handling of the Iraq War and how it led to the rise of the Islamic State. The core of it that we had a functioning state in Iraq and we invaded Iraq in 2003. Thus, we collapsed a functioning state and created a political vacuum in an area that is highly, uh, highly diverse and highly contentious. With the threats of ISIS growing on all fronts, countries all over the world struggle to contain its expansion. Meanwhile, the livelihood of millions of Muslim immigrants are kept in the dark, as their day-to-day -day interactions have been compromised. Join us next week on the second part of this Cal TV News special as we dive into the growing threats of Islamophobia among Muslim Americans. My name is Carlo David. Till next time.